Oh yeah. Three mate, settle down. This is the Venom Diaries, where we milk Australia's deadliest snakes for their venom to create anti-venom that saves over 300 lives every single year. G'day everyone, welcome back to Venom Diaries. Today, we're looking at a lot of things venomous, right? So, we're gonna start with snakes. So I'm gonna get an Eastern Brown, and I'm actually gonna put a camera up on my head so I can give you the view that I see when I'm dealing with some of these really defensive snakes. We're gonna talk a little bit about evolution, why snakes and other critters evolve to be venomous, why some have fangs and others have teeth or even spurs. So. Let's get started. We're going to go and get one of our extremely defensive brown snakes and you're going to see my view of that snake being super cranky. Alrighty guys, so I've got the action camera on, jumping in with this smaller brown snake. Uh, he's a high caution though, so you'll see what I mean in a second when um, I get him out here. Oh yeah. Wee mate, settle down. So you can get a real good look into my view with these snakes, um, with this camera we're trialing. So <clears throat> yeah, Eastern Browns, you know, I've told you this before. Oh yeah, that was right at me crutch, mate. Uh, they're the second most venomous snake in the world. They're extremely, extremely reactive, extremely defensive. Um, this is only a younger one. He's about four foot now, um, but still really dangerous. I find these smaller ones to be harder to deal with, to be honest. Um, now, we're talking evolution today, like why these snakes and other critters, A, need to be venomous, and B, why some of them are just so toxic. So, oh, look at that yield. That is massive. Now, the interesting thing with brown snakes is, yes, they're highly venomous, second most venomous snake in the world, but, they also wrap their prey to avoid injury, right? So have a go at my wrist at the moment. If he was tackling like a rodent, which is what they primarily feed on, or maybe a big lizard, he'll do that. After, like when he bites it, they actually wrap and hold on like a python, um, which is pretty unusual in the, the venomous snake world, all right? Brown snakes are really the only ones that actually do that. It actually makes letting these snakes go really challenging. They've just evolved those really small fangs, but they work really well. They penetrate through fur and scale because these guys primarily just feed on mammals and reptiles. And when it comes to venomous critters worldwide, they all specialize in feeding on different animals, right? And yeah, these guys have definitely capitalized uh, on the mammal thing, especially since Australia has been settled. Um, there's a lot of rodent activity around homes and urban areas, and that's why the brown snakes do so well in, in an urban environment compared to other snake species. Now, I'm just going to have to very quickly let him go. Um, oh, yeah. Got to get his hide box back in here. Excuse me, mate. Go under that paper. All right. So that's that. Okay, so that was a bit of a... I guess Bilbo view of what I'm doing with the brown snakes. What we're going to do now, oh sorry, I'll just quickly show you. Well, I've got you there, I'll get them right in front. Here's a couple of fangs from my last milking session. That's a king brown fang right there. I actually got that yesterday. But have a go at how small the eastern brown fang is compared to that. Look at that just there. Absolute, and you've got to imagine only about half that is actually exposed out of the gum line. So they're really small. So different venomous critters worldwide have evolved to have really big fangs, really small fangs, spurs and so on. Um, but we're going to jump onto our next critter and have a bit of a look. So come with me. Alrighty, so we're in the Weigel Venom Center. We're going to look at spiders next, but I just wanted to show you why I'm still here. Have a go at the size of the fangs. Obviously, this isn't a realistic photo. They're not that big, like, but it's wild. So like funnel webs are literally this big and they've got bigger fangs than any of our venomous snakes in Australia, right? So even bigger than coastal taipans, they're literally over a centimetre long. They're also really thick, but they're smashing prey that are sometimes up to half their size. Humongous insects, other spiders, the females even turn around and eat the males after they mate, all right? So um, they have these huge fangs, they just spear them in, and there's no real risk of breaking because they're so 
thick and so strong, and then they just jam that venom in and game over. So we're going to go to our spider room where Emma does all the crazy uh, funnel web milking, and I'll show you one up close and personal. Have a go at this, would you? This is a floor we got made for the venom center, and it's got, the kids love it. The spiders literally come to your feet. For like arachnophobes, it's probably not their most favorite part of the park, but it's really cool. My daughter Peggy is obsessed with this floor. All right, so I'm making our way over to the main building and I've just spotted this humongous golden orb weaver. So these are a species of orb weaver. That's a big female. The males are literally, he's up there. Actually, he's right behind her. They're tiny compared to the girls. But they get the name golden orb because that, that web actually has like a golden color to it. Now, not all spiders web up like this, but what, what this species does, and it's typical for an orb weaver, is they make these humongous webs and at night time, insects, even like microbats get hooked up in this and they come down and they feed on them, right? So they sort of use that to catch the prey, then they move in bite it, inject the venom, wrap it up, and they can keep it literally in like almost like a little cocoon. It dies, she can come back. You can actually see the trail of insects behind her coming off the web. So she's got a stack that she's caught over the last few nights and she's webbed them all up in a big long line there. So she can come back, feed on them. Absolutely crazy. I seen one of these in far north Queensland, like bigger than my hand, and it was actually eating um, a microbat that was about that big. So the, the webbing itself is really, really strong and um, yeah, spiders worldwide use that webbing in different ways um, to catch their prey or, or to, um, some use, literally use it as like tripwires at the top of a burrow to let them know that there's an insect nearby and they fly on out and grab it. Check this out, this is one of those golden orbs. He was just cruising across the path here. And look at that, she's webbing, getting herself back towards the ground. So I'm gonna hang her over here near the plants. How cool is that? Look at it, it's so strong that webbing. She's just hanging there. They're really, really uninclined to bite this species, which is why I'm handling her like this. I would never recommend someone to just pick a spider up like I'm doing. I've been doing it for a long time. I'm um, <laughs> well rehearsed on the spider thing. There she goes. How cool was that? Just cruising around. Big spider on me. So you can see here, I've got a huge female funnel web in front of me. And you can see those fangs. They're literally over a centimeter in length. Now, the thing with venom, it's used for multiple purposes, right? defense, securing prey. And then so with, with funnel webs um, and, and all spiders, you know, you've, you've got the defense, you've got the catching prey, and then it actually breaks the prey item down. So these guys inject an insect, it literally turns the inside of that insect into like a milkshake and they just go and suck it on out. So it's, it's crazy. And so as different animals have evolved, they've got either fangs or spurs. And like, to give you an example, of an animal that's venomous that you've probably never even heard of, that doesn't have fangs, but they've got venom. It's a primate over in Southeast Asia, they're called a slow loris, and they have a venom gland right there. And they literally, they feel like they're under threat by something, they lick it and then bite, the venom gets on their teeth and they bite it into whatever predator is coming towards them. It's crazy. And then you look at platypus, right? Platypus, again, a mammal, venomous mammal, they've got the males have got a spur down on their ankles and they use that to spur the other males when they're punching on in breeding season because the pain inflicted from that spur is so severe, they reckon it's enough to almost semi-paralyze the other males so he stays away from the, the females nearby and then old mate, the winner, can chase the girls and, and do his thing. It's crazy when, you, you know, there's a, there's a huge rabbit hole you can, you can really go down when you're talking venom and venomous animals and fangs and spurs and how they deliver it through different systems, but um, it's absolutely crazy. But obviously, to start off with, we're looking at the well-known things, snakes and spiders, okay? So we've had a look at her. We've got a few hundred, maybe probably 700 adult funnel webs at the moment that are um, for the Venom program. I will do an episode focused on our Venom program with the spiders with Emma, maybe in a few weeks time. She does the majority of the milk and we'll come in and we'll milk a few spiders and I'll show you in a bit more detail. But what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna show you an animal that you would not think is venomous. Have a go at this wild looking unit. This is a Gila monster and they are a venomous lizard. When people think of venomous animals, like I was saying before, they think of snakes and spiders. A lizard, imagine that. So most people have never heard of this species. They're found over in places like Arizona and yeah, they're venomous, right? But interesting, and this is with venomous lizards in general, because there's quite a few, the venom glands aren't up behind the back of the head like they would be on a snake. 
the, that's the venom gland right there, okay? Now, they don't have fangs like a venomous snake, but they have teeth with grooves running down. So they bite, and they, they purely use it for defense. They bite, hold on, jam it in. I've been told the bite from one of these literally feels like someone's pouring hot lava on the bite site. So it's meant to be absolutely horrific. There's no confirmed fatalities. There was, there's an unconfirmed fatality from like the 1930s over in America there, um, but they're not 100%. You know, the records obviously weren't great back then, but there's plenty of recorded bites. People with them in captivity get bitten every single year. We've never had a bite, thankfully. Um, I do not want to experience a bite um, from one of these, but they're really shy, elusive lizards. They spend most of their time underground in really hot areas around Arizona, and they poke up. And pretty crazy, you know, like they're this wild looking unit um, and they pretty much feed on bird eggs, like quail eggs, they love them. They'll eat baby birds as well, maybe a lizard if they can get a hold, but um, they don't eat very often, like out in the wild, it's lucky to eat once a month, that's it. So they do absolutely nothing. They're colored in these wild colors, like this guy's really old now, he's um, probably going on to 20 years of age. He's shedding his skin at the moment, so you can see that nice pink coming out in him. So that'll shed right across his body uh, over the next few weeks or so. Because they don't shed in one go like a snake does, it'll just start peeling off him. Huge big claws that help him dig. And uh, yeah, absolutely wild looking. So um, in this genus, there's this one here, the, the, um, the Gila monster, and then there's the Mexican beaded lizard, which is split up into a couple of species too. So yeah, ma amazing looking critters. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you the world's largest lizard that's also venomous, all right? Come with me. Rightio, so this is our Komodo dragon exhibit. And you guessed it, Komodo's biggest lizard on the planet, and they're also venomous, right? So we've got a pair in here. I've got the big fella right there, that's Kraken. He's a monster, but he's, he's normally a bit of a good boy. And then we've got his girlfriend next door, Daenerys, who's looking quite wide at the moment. She's coming into breeding mode, so, uh, We've got her nest box open. She's been digging flat out over the next few months. We're gonna see her behavior change a bit and we're gonna put Kraken in and hopefully we're gonna get baby Komodos. But, venomous lizards, all right? So follow me down here. We're gonna jump in with him, say good day to the big fella, give him a bit of a pat and a scratch. I've been lucky enough to work with Kraken since he was this big, all right? So he used to literally sit on my shoulders, but now he's way too big for that. You can actually see our Komodos, we, we walk them in the park here every single day. So just check the times, because it's different times, weekdays um, versus weekends. Um, but yeah, we, we have them harness trained and we actually take them out to the park area. And um, and you can see them up real close. It's really cool, exciting. Alrighty, so they're coming in here. I'm just gonna close that door behind us. When I come in with the, the big dragons, you know, obviously <laughs> this is the biggest lizard on the planet. They can be extremely dangerous, but um, we spend a lot of time working with them, so I'm just going to go up, say good day, let him know I don't have any food, because when these things are foodie, mate, it is hardcore. So I'm going to go and see the big fella, say hello, and uh, hello, sweetheart, you're next door. Hey, mate, what's going on? What's going on, big fella? Hey, hey. So yeah, I just let him know I'm here. It's all good. Got no food. But um, have a go at the size of him, right? He is massive. Now, when we're talking venom, like I was saying, the venom glands on the lizards, they're in that lower jaw there. So he's just right down the side here. Um, again, no fangs, but massive teeth. Now, the venom for these guys, what it actually does is, because he's chasing massive mammals, right? So goats, pigs, deer, even Asianic water buffalo that can be over a thousand kilo weight. And what they do is they, they lie in almost like an ambush in long grass. Um, you know, I've been over to the islands in Komodo. It's wild and it's really hot. Like you can probably see me, I'm sweating right now. It's 40 degrees in here. I'm literally, I feel like melted ice cream. These guys love it, right? So yeah, when I was over there, you'd be walking on these game trails and then bang, all of a sudden there's like a two and a half, three meter Komodo sitting there in ambush. So, and that's what they do and they wait they get close enough to these animals and they sprint after them and they just go whack and they bite them, right? And they bite them hard. And they got over a hundred teeth inside the mouth there. They're recurved shape and they're like shark teeth. So they're teeth on top of their teeth, right? They're serrated and they just cause this insane injury. And the venom, the toxins in that venom will actually stop that bite site being able to clot. 
and the animal will bleed and bleed and bleed. It's hardcore, it's horrific, right? And then eventually the animal, after sometimes weeks, becomes so weak, dragons will come together, they'll overpower it and consume it. It is a hardcore world over there, mate. It is wild. But um, we love the big fella. He's about 13 or so now. Um, and yeah, they can get over three meters in length. These big boys weigh over 100 kilos. So uh, he's got a bit of growing to do. They can live for over 35 years, uh, maybe longer in captivity. We'll see how he goes. But um, yeah, he's a really special lizard. We absolutely love him. Now, this is episode eight, all right? So the channel's doing great. I can't thank you enough for the support. It's absolutely pumping. So to sort of give back, at episode 10, I'm going to do a giveaway. So I'll put a bit more detail in it um, with episode number nine, and I'll, I'll pump it on my Instagram as well. So jump on my Instagram and the Reptile Park Instagram, and we'll show you what we're going to do. But we're going to do a giveaway for episode 10. I'm thinking like a snake bite kit from Survival First Aid and maybe a couple other things. We'll see how we go, but I'll give you more detail on that. But anyway, I hope you learned something today, a little bit about venom and evolution and so on. Uh, and why there's different venom, venom, venomous animals and, and why they are the way they are. So yeah, thanks for your support. That's it for episode eight. Uh, remember, tell your friends, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you for uh, episode number nine.